All right. So again, thanks for doing this, Lauren. I really appreciate it. I know you're extremely busy <laughs> and congratulations with finishing the first um, four classes. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So one of your um, statements uh, in your question, it says that what influenced you to become a teacher? Um, you said that you, you discovered a strong passion to work with students who experience emotional, mm -hmm. mental, and academic disabilities. And I wanted you to maybe kind of elaborate a little bit more if there was a specific moment, you know, working with a student. I know you do a lot of volunteer uh, work. Uh, if there was a specific student, um, not naming names, but just, you know, an event that really said, you know, okay, this is it. I, I want to work in special education. Um, that was probably, I think, in high school. Uh, I was, my mom was running a program. It was Buggy About Basics, so it was a summer program for kids um, just to kind of get them up to speed a little bit. Uh, almost all of these kids um, were on, like, either an IEP or had behavioral issues, um, something was going on with them. And so I would, ended up being a one-on-one -on -one aide for a little boy in kindergarten. And um, he was amazing. He was also a runner. Um, so kind of trying to keep him in the classroom was and safe, um, was a, probably one of the biggest roles I had. Um, and what was neat about him is I think that students, a lot, especially right now, are experiencing um, a lot of extra baggage, I guess. I mean, they're experiencing some things I could never, I guess, even have thought of experiencing in my life. And so whether that be like their parents in prison or they're um, surrounded by drugs or they don't have both parents at home or um, something else, I don't think we can really focus on learning until we figure out and address how this student is feeling and so that was a big moment for me and um i and also allowing him to build a trust in me and so he finally trusted me towards i mean it took a while so it was towards the end of the um the summer but he finally let his guard down after i proved that you know i did care about him um he could trust me um and i was there just as an advocate for him, basically, and to make sure that he succeeded. And he, he ended up um, telling me in a drawing um, that his dad had killed somebody and was in prison, and his mom was a drug addict, and he was in foster care. And he, I didn't know this, I guess, really prior, so I guess the, um, the teachers could have communicated that better to me. Um, but he he experienced some pretty awful things going from foster home to foster home. I think he'd been probably in two that past year. Mm. Um, and I think that's rough, not having like that stability. And so what made me realize I wanted to do, do special ed was this student because um, it's not fair that they don't have access to learning. And I think sometimes we can push students aside because of that. Yeah. Um, but he's a very smart boy. And if he had the right, um, access to things, I think he would do very well. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. It seemed like a really special, special moment. It was cool. I liked him. Um, so tell me a little bit more about your experience so far in the, the, the program. I know you had mentioned um, you like the small classes, but can you elaborate a little bit more on that and maybe your experiences so far with uh, faculty members? Yeah. Um, the whole dynamics of the program I'm loving, uh, it's very individualized, I guess, too. Um, if something doesn't work for me, then that's okay. I mean, if I need extra help on something or I might need um, the PowerPoints printed off or um, Julie, for instance, started doing these guided uh, kind of lecture notes for when we were in class because somebody brought that up and so very accommodating all the professors have been and um, making sure that it's not about how much we learn but rather the quality of what we're learning um, so really making sure that we get something before we move on um, and so I feel like that's really helping me to make sure that I, I grasp the concept before I add another one um, and I love the whole 
my whole class, I guess, combining the elementary with the secondary has been kind of a neat experience too. Um, we all have such different experience. And so I've been learning a lot also from my classmates and what they've done in their volunteer work. And um, some have been educators and are just getting their license in special ed. Some have been paraprofessionals, um, ABA therapists. And so it's really neat to learn from them too. Great. And um, this is my final question. I know uh, this may, I know I didn't have you answer this uh, mm -hmm. in the questions I sent you, but uh, I wanted to get your perspective on um, what did you before you started like volunteering uh, with students with special needs or you know volunteering with students that were you know struggling and academically and, and so forth. What did you think um, special education was like? What did you? What was your understanding of special education? I think more my understanding of special education is kind of like the LRC route, like so learning disabilities. Mm -hmm. um, and I had um, a visual auditory learning disability and dyslexic. Um, and so I had more, I guess, personal experience that kind of um, made me think of special ed kind of in my own terms, I guess. Um, and so once I started volunteering and experiencing and meeting different people um, and different mm -hmm. students and um, learning about some of their abilities and different things like that, I definitely uh, learned a lot more and that special ed um, encompasses a bigger, um, a much larger percentage of the school than I thought yeah. from the students. And so I think that's cool. Um, Addressing too, like that a learning disability doesn't have to just be like auditory, visual. Um, you don't have to just have dyslexia, but a student that might have anxiety issues, um, experience seeing those types of things. So how can we really make sure that that student feels comfortable and safe in the classroom to participate and share? Um, and sometimes those can be accompanied with somebody who has cerebral palsy. They might be nervous and have anxiety about standing up in front of the class because they have abrasives on their legs or they might look different to their other peers. And that shouldn't be an issue. That shouldn't be something that they have to feel. And so I, that's been something I've been learning too. Yeah.